Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening. So happy to see each and every one of you on tonight. Welcome to the Acts of Random Kindness Christian Center or the Art Christian Center Bible Study. So happy to see each and every one of you on tonight. Um, well, it is time to get started. So we're going to uh, open up with a word of prayer. We're asking, you saw the tag go along, please tag, like, and share. Let people know that we are here on Bible study on this evening, on this evening, on this evening. It's been such a beautiful day. I hope you had the opportunity to enjoy some of the sunshine on today. Uh, it's going to get hotter as the week goes on, so enjoy it while you can, while the humidity is still low. All right, let's go to a word of prayer. Father, we come to you on today. We always acknowledge you first. We always want to acknowledge that you are our Father, you are our Lord, you are the King. You are everything to us. We want to acknowledge that you do with all things well and that there is no failure in you. We want to acknowledge, Father, that you are um, the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning, you are the end, you are the first and you are the last. You are the Rose of Sharon, you are the Prince of Peace, you are the Everlasting Father. You are the God of our provider, you provide our needs, you meet our needs. And we're so grateful for you on today, Father. We're thankful for you on today. We love you today. We love you. We understand that you love us and that there is nothing that we can do about it. You said that nothing can separate us from your love. And we're so grateful for that. And we thank you for that on today. We thank you, Father, because you've allowed us to still be in the land of the living. And we don't take that for granted. And so we say thank you. We thank you for breathing life into us on today. Thank you for giving us. This is a day that we've never seen. And it's a day that we'll never see again. And so we enter into this time of Bible study with thanksgiving on our hearts, with praise on our lips. We thank you on today. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And now, Father, we offer up our prayers to you, Father. We understand that you said that you hear the prayers of the righteous. And so, Father, we're laying our petitions out for you on today. Um, we don't know what everyone's need is on the line, but Father, you said that you hear our prayers. And so we thank you for answering those prayers even now. We thank you for going into the hospital rooms. We thank you for going into the nursing homes. We thank you for going behind the prison walls. Thank you for going into our schools, even during the summer. We thank you for going into our homes. Let your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in our homes, in our homes, in our children, in our parents, Father, in our lives, in our marriages. We thank you even now. Father, we thank you, God. We are laying those before you on tonight, those that have been asking for prayer. We thank you for the recovery and for the healing on tonight. Thank you for the recovery and the healing of Brother Thomas Wolf. God, you're doing great miracles in his life, and we're grateful for that. Father, we thank you for the healing and the recovery of Mother Freeman. We thank you even now, Father. We ask that we will continue to pray for our mothers in Zion. We pray for Mother McFadden. We pray for Mother Green. We pray for those mothers, God, Mother White, all of those mothers, Father, that we can't even think of all their names. But Father, be with them, strengthen them, give them strength, renew their youth even now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every church door, whether it's open, God, whether it's in the building, whether it's outside, if it's on Zoom or on whatever social media platform that it can be on, God, we speak that the word will go forth, that it will fall on good ground. Father, that none of us will speak out of ourselves, but we will speak through the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you even now. We pray that every word that goes forth tonight, God, that it will fall on good ground. And we speak that the enemy will never have the opportunity to snatch it out of our hearts, but it will remain, it will grow, it will flourish in the name of Jesus. Thank you for every promise that you've given us, Father. We stand on your word on today. We're not weary in well-doing because we understand that in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the seeds that have been sown. Thank you for the seeds. Thank you for the good ground that those seeds have been planted in and that they're going to spring forth. Thank you for our due season 
in the name of Jesus. Father, you are wonderful. You are great. You are all knowing. You are all loving. And God, we love you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. And so, Father, all of us on tonight, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor because it's due to you and only to you in Jesus' name. And the church say amen. And the church say amen. Amen. And amen. And the church says amen. Again, I say good evening to all of you. So happy to see you on tonight. Um, and we're going to get right into our Bible study. We don't know. I always say we're not going to be here the whole time, but who knows? Who knows how the Holy Spirit, how Holy Spirit will lead and how he will guide us on tonight. So I'm happy to hear that um, and see some of you. Uh, those of you that were not on when the announcements went forth, I just want to just go over those again um, because we have some very important things that are coming up um, in the very near future. Number one, tomorrow is our youth Bible study. So that's always important. That's always near and dear because I truly believe that as we put the word in our children now, that as they get older, when they go off to college, when they get married, that word is going to remain, it's going to stick and it's going to stay in the name of Jesus. So it's important if you have young ones between the ages of kindergarten through 12th grade, go ahead and put them on Bible study, put them in Bible study, you cannot go wrong. The other thing that is very important is our black tie and our sneaker um, gala that is coming up in just about three and a half weeks. It is on July the 22nd, which is a Friday at the Hilton Hotel on City Avenue. Um, if you have not purchased your ticket, you need to do so by Friday, July the 1st. And if you don't have the money and you are definitely coming and you can put a deposit down, we will take your non-refundable deposit and hold your ticket for you. Let me tell you, we've gotten so many calls. People are sending me pictures of, of what they're going to be wearing. They're sending me uh, pictures of their sneakers. They are excited. I am excited. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. It's not going to be, this is an Art Christian Center affair. It is um, a, a, for our building, um, what am I trying to say? Our Burning Bush Initiative. Um, we are going to be moving into our own building. We're not going to rent anymore. We are going to buy a building so that we can put forth the work that God has given us to put forth. So that is what this is all about. But we got some exciting things in our uh, coming up. That Black Tie Affair and that Sneaker Gala. Um, we have a comedian. Um, I hear that he's great. He's funny. We have a silent auction. We're going to have music. There's going to be some line dancing. And don't get, don't get for those of you that say, oh, Lord, they're going to be dancing. It's just line dancing. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So we got some fun things planned for that night in addition to serving you a three-course meal. So it's well worth the money. I can't wait to see all of you um, at our Black Tie and Sneaker Gala. But those of you that have tickets, you need to um, make sure you contact Sister Donna Patterson or Elder Sonia Berry. Let them know where you are in your ticket sales. You need to be turning that money in um, so that we can go ahead and put that money into the hotel and be ready for July 22nd. All right, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Again, good evening, good evening, good evening to all of you. Good evening to all of you. We're going to be coming to you tonight from the book of Romans, chapter 8. Romans, chapter 8. I will start at verse 1, um, and then I may skip down to verse, I think I'll read verse 1 and 2, and then skip down to verses 5, 6, and 7, 8, and 9. <laughs> So verse one, Romans chapter eight, verse one, Romans chapter eight, King James says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I want to read verse two to you as um, well. And it says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives us life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And then verse five, we're going to skip down to verse five. If you have, I read along with me, you know, if we were in church, I would say, come on and read along with me. Verse five, verse five, 
It's the NIV version. It says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on that on what the spirit desires. Let me read that again. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. Verse six, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Verse seven and verse eight, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. And those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Verse nine, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. And I want to go back to verse one again. There is therefore now, somebody type now in the chat. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I want to use this for a topic on tonight, um, just that to tie this in with those scriptures that we just read. Our topic on tonight is how, how you walking? How are you walking? That's the topic for tonight. How are you walking how are you walking somebody put that in the chat how are you walking how are you walking that is our topic on tonight there is therefore no condemnation to them that walk upright there's no condemnation there there's none to there's none to which those that are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit how are you walking? How are you? I see you, Jazz. Thank you. How are you walking? Um, there, 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 there was a study that was done that says that just about everyone has their own walking style. Everyone has their own walking style. Um, I think about my siblings. I, I think about my siblings. My sister, um, she used to be so pigeon toed. I mean, she would be walking. It, it was almost like she was walking one foot on top of the other. Um, she had her own walking style. I remember, I remember, I believe it was one of my nieces. Um, she had very bow legs. Her legs were so bow. Um, they looked just like a bow um, from an arrow, a bow and arrow type thing. And they had to break her bones in order for her to be able to walk, that her legs would be straight. Um, so we all have our own walking style. We all have, and sometimes we can hear someone's coming and we know who it is just by the sound of their footsteps. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, I, I can hear sometimes, uh, you can hear someone coming. Uh, you, even in church, you you know, certain people wear, uh, will wear certain shoes and the way that they walk, you might say, oh, here comes sister so-and-so. I, I don't see her, but I hear her. I, I hear her. I hear those heels. I hear her coming. Or here comes brother so-and-so. I, I hear them walking. Um, I, I, uh, it was just so ironic. We were at our family reunion this past um this past week and I think we were in a restaurant and it was this gentleman he had on flip-flops and his flip-flops were squeaky 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 and I was I, it just caught my attention and I imagine I was saying I know they whoever he lives with whoever he is a part of they know him people would know him probably by those squeaky or those squeaky um uh flip-flops that he had on oh we were in the restaurant that's where we were on sunday and he was going up to the salad bar and his flip-flops were just as squeaking and i said if i ever heard that again i would probably envision that that man so 
some of us, we have our own walking style. It could be um, how we walk, how our legs are shaped, the type of shoes that we wear. And even some psychologists say that they can analyze people by the way that they walk. They can analyze them. Um, and they even state that it is even possible to judge, hear me, a person's spiritual condition by the way he walks. I don't know how they do that, but they said that they can judge a person's spiritual condition by the way the person walks. They can judge by the way that they walk. They can judge even from that, the type of people, hear what I'm saying, the type of people that he or she may walk with uh, and how and where he's walking. I don't know how they're doing that, but they said, but based on that person's spiritual condition, they can tell by the way he walks, who he's walking with and where he's walking to. My God today, that sounds like a little bit of the word to me. Bible, the Bible, God understands that even God knows how we walk. He knows the way in which we're walking and he knows who we're walking with and he knows where we're walking. He knows where we go and where we're going. You know that there is nothing hidden from God. You understand that, right? There is nothing that God that does not know. The Bible tells us where can we go that he does not know. If I make my bed in hell, where is he? He's there. If I make my bed, in, uh, he's there. He's everywhere. And so psychologists have even said that they can judge a person's spiritual walk based by on the way that he walks or their spiritual condition. My God today. So when we think about the way that we're walking, how are you walking? How are you walking? God knows the way that we walk. He knows who we're walking with and he knows where we're walking. He knows the places where we go. Listen, you can put on the softest shoes that you want, but God knows, he knows, he knows, he knows how we're walking and he knows where we're walking and he knows who we're walking with. Glory to God. If we think about that, some of us might think twice about the way that we walk and who we're walking with and where we're walking to. Glory to God. So how are you walking? How are you walking? Some years ago, um, singer, the singer uh, Israel Halton, he, re he released a song and he's, the song is, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. My past is over. I'm moving. I'm moving forward. And it's a song that resonates with us a lot of times when we're in a uh, service, when we're in church and we're in the praise and worship moment. Um, a lot of us, it, it resonates for the moment it's, it, it's because we're singing it. However, when one knows what it truly means to walk in the fullness and in the newness of Christ, um, there is nothing that the enemy or your friends or your families or your foes, there is nothing that they can ever do that will define who you are because you are in Christ. So even if they try to define you based on your past, you can just tell them, get thee behind me, Satan. I don't care what you know about my past and how you know how I used to walk. But the question is, how am I walking now? How, how am I walking now? Who am I walking with now? Where am I walking? Where are my footsteps taking me? Where are my footsteps taking me? The Bible says that he orders our footsteps. And so when the enemy, when your family, your friends, and even your foes, when they try to define you and define who you are in Christ because of your past, you can tell them, no, no, no. I know you know who I used to be and how I used to walk and where I used to walk and who I used to walk with. But you can't define me by, by that anymore because now I got a new walk. I got it. You know what the Bible says? Says, this song says, I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I got a new attitude. And that's the way we are. And this is why Paul is telling us, because now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Why? Because once you became a child of the most high God, once you became a child of the king, your true identity was revealed. Hear what I'm saying about true identity. It was not our true identity before we gave our lives over to Christ. That wasn't who we truly were. We were, we were a part of the world, but that wasn't who God knew us to be. He knew us. Remember, the Bible says that he formed us before the foundation of the world. So because when you became a child of the Most High God, when you became a child of the King, your true identity was revealed. The Bible lets us know in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, therefore... 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. How am I walking now? I don't care what you know about me from the past, but how am I walking now? Glory to God. In the book of Romans, hallelujah. In the book, listen, I'm excited about that because I think about it. I think about it. I was sharing something with one of my ministers on on um the other day. We were just talking about life and what was going on. And I shared some things with her about my past and some things I went through and some things I was going through. And she said to me, Pastor Dora, I can't even imagine you. I'm like, no, that's what I used to be. That's how I used to be. That's how I used to walk. That's how I used to walk. But I don't walk that way anymore. I got my stuff together. When I say I got my stuff together, now I'm not telling you that I'm perfect, but there's some things I realized that once I gave my life to Christ, I said, I'm not walking that way anymore. I'm not going to behave that way anymore. I'm not going to do things that way anymore. Why? Because the Bible says that there's no condemnation if I walk upright before him. Glory to God. Glory to God. So in the book, in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, if you, you got to go back and understand, because when you go to Romans chapter eight, verse one, it starts off with this word, therefore, there is therefore, there is therefore. So that says that something must have happened for the writer, for Paul to even start off this chapter that way. He says, there is therefore. So something was going on. What was going on? If you go back and read chapter seven, it is, it is with a poignant and a powerful description. And Paul, he's the talking about himself. He's speaking about his personal struggles, struggles with sin and where he states the good that I would do, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. The good that I want to do, I find myself not doing it. But here's this, check this out. Here's my walk, here's, here's, here's how. The evil that I will not, that I don't want to do, that I find myself doing. So in desperation, Paul cries out for help. He's crying out for help. He says, the good, I want to do good, but I can't because my flesh, my flesh, my flesh keeps telling me to do otherwise. So he's crying out for help. He's crying out for deliverance from his inability to live as he know God's want him to live. Anybody ever been in that situation? You ever been in a place where you don't want to do certain things, but your flesh keeps winning over. It's causing you to walk in a direction that you know that God doesn't. Anybody been there? I I ain't saying if you if you're doing it now but if you've been there done that just type that in the chat been there done that been there done that paul paul he was in a place he said look i want to do what i know it's right to do but i keep finding myself doing the evil that i don't want to do been there done that been there done that paul he's been trying he's been trying to live he said look I, I, I want to live this righteous life through the power of his flesh but he understood that he couldn't live through his flesh according to the will of God. He can't, none of us, none of us, if any of us are still trying to operate under the flesh, if any of us are still trying to operate in this thing called flesh, this thing right here, this thing that we're living in, this thing that God has covered us with, if we try to walk in God's precepts according to the flesh, we're going to be just like Paul. The good that I would do, I can. But the evil that I don't want to do, that I find myself doing. My God today, glory to God. So Paul, Paul had been trying. He'd been trying. He says, look, I want to live this righteous life. But he couldn't because his flesh, his flesh, his flesh, his flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he, he, his flesh was weak. He had no strength while he was operating in the flesh. But look, look, look what Paul, Paul had, Paul had, thank you, Mother McFadden, been there, done that, been there, done that. In Romans chapter eight, Paul, he then discusses life through the spirit and that everyone who lives through Jesus Christ you cannot be condemned because they're free from sin and death. Now that there, right there is good news. That there, he begins the chapter with a powerful statement. He says, there is therefore, now, there is therefore now no condemnation. There, there's no, there's right now, right now, if you are in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. So you have to understand that when you and I accepted Christ, our past no longer defines who we are. Glory to God. When we accepted Christ, 
our past no longer define who we were, who we are. So wherever we used to walk, wherever we used to go, whatever we used to do, our past no longer defines that. Why? Because now we're not living under condemnation. Now that alone should be enough to cause anybody for your spirit to leap in joy. Because some of you are walking around and you're saying, oh my God, I used to do this. I used to do that. I used to go here. I used to be a part of this. I used to hang out with this person. But no, the Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation and even even if your resume even if your resume resume includes bad choices if your resume includes wrong turns if your resume includes numerous mistakes they don't have to rule or dictate who you are today you don't have to live like that you don't have to live under condemnation the bible tells us that there is therefore no condemnation none 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 now now today the day that you accepted christ he says you're no longer living under condemnation that means you don't have to keep walking the way you used to walk you don't have to allow family friends and foes and the enemy to tell you that you did that now you can that you're never going to change no there is no condemnation how are you walking anybody anybody i, I somebody put up a finger some tell me that you're still there i need to know that you're still a part of this conversation on tonight so paul says there is no condemnation in other words you do you don't have to carry the weight of guilt because of your pre-Christ life. Thank you, I see you, thank you. I think, thank you, thank you for talking to me. You know I need some interaction. Paul says, there is now no condemnation. That means you can walk with your head held up high. That means you can walk knowing that you are in Christ. That means you can walk knowing that I am a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. That means now that you can walk, you can walk in the newness of Christ. You can walk in the newness of Christ. You say, the Bible says, they that walk, they that believe, they that trust. God is, he no longer holds these things against you. Those were pre-Christ. <laughs> you can tell the enemy, only thing you're showing me right now is pre-Christ. But let me show you right now, Christ, the Christ that lives in me, the Christ that lives in me. If you do studies on the word condemnation, it is, it is found only two times in the New Testament. Once here in chapter eight and once in chapter five. It is a word, it is referring to punishment. Um, it is a result of being declared guilty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you understand that you're no longer guilty? That once Jesus hung on the cross, that you're no longer guilty? Once he died for you and once he died for us, that we're no longer guilty, that we don't have to face punishment? That's why we can walk in the newness of Christ. And what Paul is telling us that we don't even have to fear whether or not the sins that we have committed. The Bible says that he had put his sins behind him. He put them in this in behind him. Some people preach the sin of uh, what's that? The sea of uh, forgiveness, although you know that's not scriptural, but you understand what they meant by that, that God doesn't remember that. That's why we don't have to walk with our heads hung low. We don't have to walk when people try to give our resumes back to us on how we used to do and what we used to do. No, we don't have to. I, you can tell them, I don't know what you're talking about because God, if I go to God and I ask him, he'll just tell me, I understand. Here's my daughter. Here's my son. This is how they're walking. This is how they're talking. This is how they're living. This is what they're doing. That You don't have to worry that God is going to do anything because of your past. But once you have repented, once you have given it over to God, once you gave your life to Christ, he said, you can walk in newness. You can walk in newness. You can walk in newness. Somebody put in the chat, I'm walking in newness. I am walking in newness. I am walking in newness. Glory to God. I'm walking in newness. newness. I'm walking in newness. newness. Oh, I can't get the words out. I'm walking in newness. You don't have to worry how you walking, how you walking, how you walking, how you walking. Listen, I understand. I talked to so many saints today and a lot of them are still living in a state of turmoil because they feel like God can't forgive them. They felt like I'm being punished for something I'm done, I've done. I'm being punished because of my past. I'm being punished because of something I didn't do. I'm being punished. But let me, uh, let me just tell you, God does not operate like that. 
We don't have a God. The world operates like that. The world will operate. They will try to tell you based on what you've done. Look, you talk about, here, here's a prime example, credit scores, right? You go, you pull up a credit score. The credit score is going to say, well, this is what you had. This is the kind of credit you had. This is the debts that you had. This is what you didn't pay. This is how you did pay. This is how slow you paid. This went into collections. This went into foreclosure. This went into bankruptcy. But God doesn't do that. God says, no, uh-uh. I, no, once you accepted me, once you now say, God, I, for you, I live and for God, you, I die. I'm not walking after the flesh, but I'm walking after the spirit. He said, this has all been wiped clean. You got a clean credit report with me. I don't see anything about a bankruptcy on here. I don't see anything about fraudulent behavior. I don't see anything about sinful behavior. I don't see anything about what you didn't do. What I see is that I see that you have been covered in the blood, that you're now walking in the newness of Christ. What I see now that you love me and that you walk in my in the spirit and that you're no longer walking in the flesh, that you're being led and you're being guided by the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Somebody say my slate is clean. My slate is clean. My slate is clean. My credit report with God is clean. My credit report with God is clean. Glory to God. How many of you are glad that you got a clean credit report? How many are glad that God has wiped everything clean? He's wiped out the bankruptcies. He wiped out the fraudulency. He wiped out the bad behavior. He wiped, he wiped out the cussing and the fussing. He wiped, he wiped out sexual impurity. Um, um, fornication. He wiped out adultery. He wiped. He wiped it all out. My slate is clean. Glory to God. I got a clean, a clean slate. I got a clean slate. Ah, I got a clean slate. I got a clean slate. I got it. Anybody here know what I'm talking about on tonight? I came to tell you on tonight, stop condemning yourself. Stop putting yourself down. Stop allowing others to condemn you about what you used to do, about mistakes that you made, even if you made them on yesterday. You know what the Bible says? Once we repent, once we turn it around, once we say, God, I have repented, I know I turned away from it. God now wipes your slate clean. You can walk with your head held up high. How are you walking? in saints of God? How are you walking? Do you understand that your walk also ties into your belief system about who you are and who God is to you? How you walk has a lot to do with your faith and what you believe. How you walk has a lot to do on how you behave. How you walk is what you... Do you believe what the word of God says? Do you believe what God says? Do you believe his promises? Do you believe the promises that he has given to you? Do you believe those things? Do you believe that all things truly do work together for the good? Do you believe that then you can walk? You can walk in the newness of God. How are you walking? How are you walking? How are you walking? Listen, we understand. We understand. Nobody on this earth is perfect. No, none of us is, are perfect. But when we walk in Christ, do you understand that he now, he covers us. He covers us. Even as Jesus is sitting there on the right hand of his father and he's interceding for us and he's saying, he's my child. No, God, no, there's nothing. I don't see anything. She's covered. He's covered in the blood. He's been wiped clean. Huh? Now he's walking in my, my statutes. He's walking in my precepts. He's walking in the things of me. He's living according to the word. Is he perfect? No. Is she perfect? No. Is she doing everything? right no it does he do everything right no but because i understand there is therefore no now condemnation glory to god are you still with me on tonight are you still with me on tonight are you sleeping on me what what's going on give me a thumb give me a heart give me something somebody say pastor dar i'm still with you i'm still what with you so the bible says in romans chapter 8 it says there is therefore no condemnation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just let me know. You know, I need some interaction. You know, I need to know if you're still here with me. There is therefore no condemnation. Why? Which are to them that are in Christ Jesus. Now look at what the Bible says. Look at what it says. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the flesh. We cannot operate church. We can't operate in the church. The church, the church, we can't operate in the church. Okay, I'm I'm probably about to get myself in a little bit of trouble here on tonight. What I'm trying to understand, what I'm trying to understand, why are the saints of God on social media arguing about abortion? 
Why? 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 Why are the why is the church? Why is the saints of God on social media arguing about abortion? Why? Why is that an argument for the for the for the saints of God? Now, listen, I, I'm not getting into whether it should, when it should and when it should not happen, whether it should never happen. I just don't understand why the church is arguing about abortion. Why is there um uh, yeah, arguments basically. People going back and forth on social media about abortion. Now, listen again. Whether you've had an abortion, whether you, whatever your belief system is, but we got to go by the word of God. We have to go by the word of God. I heard Jamal Bryan say the other day that we have been, we've been. Um, he talked about uh, people eating Oreo cookies versus people having faith, and that there is something in the Oreo cookie that causes something to stimulate in our body. It stimulates us, and he said people are being more stimulated by the world than they are being stimulated by the word of God. And the church, the church, and he just said, he said that even us in the church, we have stimulated and infiltrated ourselves into the world instead of allowing the world to be infiltrated by the church. Come on, church, we got to get better. We got to, why are we arguing about worldly things? Why, why are we arguing about that? I don't know what you've done. I don't know what you've been through. But what I can tell you is that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So whether you believe or don't believe, but better, here's what I would say, go to the word. Go to the word, go to the word, go to the word, go to the word. As a matter of fact, stop arguing on social media. Stop arguing on, it's making the church look bad, glory to God. All right, I digress, I digress. So requirements, 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 requirements on how to avoid walking in the flesh. Number one, a requirement is if we don't know what the word says, how is it that we're going to apply the word to our lives? So, you know, you know, you got to read the word. You got to study the word. You need to know what the word says. If we're not going to walk after the flesh, then we got to know the word. If we're not going to walk after the flesh, we need to understand what the word says about the flesh. We need to understand that the flesh, the flesh, really, the Bible says, right? That the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So if I can't put my flesh under subjection, how is it that I'm not going to be able, how is it that I will be able to overrule the flesh? We got to learn how to overrule our flesh. There's some things, listen, the things that I'm working on is this thing right here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What does the word say is getting, yes, right. It's our God in question. That's it. That's it. That's right. That's it, Erica. The word is our guiding question. It is our guiding question. And I think what's happening, let me digress again. What is happening um, is because there are some people who may have gone through certain things, who may have experienced um, this particular topic. But I will tell you, first of all, don't condemn yourself because God doesn't condemn you. If you have asked God for forgiveness, then you don't have to condemn yourself and don't let anybody else condemn you. But here's the other thing. Even if you have been a part of that, even if that has happened to you, here's the thing. We still got to stand on the word because you know what the world will tell you? Well, if you've done it, how are you going to tell me that it's wrong for me? Well, I didn't know what the word said. I didn't understand what the word, I didn't understand the word, but just because I did something like my mother used to say if somebody jump off the bridge are you going to jump to no we're not going to do that we're going to go to the word we're going to go to the word and just like with Paul remember Paul who used to be Saul when he was Saul and he was condemning the church and he was killing the church and he was killing those that um, professed Jesus Christ and him saved and him crucified and when Paul was doing all of these things and then they, when he, he got converted those the same church folks said to him but wait isn't this the same one that used to condemn the church isn't this the same one that used to um, kill us isn't this the same one yes he was the same one but now I'm changed and so therefore now there is no condemnation Paul began to walk a different walk he began to walk a different trail he began to walk by faith and not by sight Paul was converted he was changed he didn't let his past dictate 
who he is now. And don't you dare let your past dictate who you are now. Don't you dare let somebody dictate who you are now because of your past, because of things that you've done. Don't you dare allow it to happen. Don't you dare allow it to happen. You just tell them straight up. Now, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I am new. I behold, all things have become new. So you don't have to worry about that. And don't you dare let anybody else condemn you. Glory to God. So we can't walk after the flesh. We cannot walk after the flesh. We have to walk after the spirit. So let me, when we walk after the spirit, what happens? There, there are four things. If you go through uh, Romans chapter eight, there are four things that you will see that if we are believers, then there are four things that we can enjoy right here on earth. There are four things that we can enjoy. So you're going to, we have to put our flesh under subjection. Oh, I was getting ready to confess. I, I, I digress. I forgot. So one of the things that I am, um, I am learning and I'm still learning to put under subjection. I'm better at it, but I, I still got some work to do. That's this thing. I think I shared that with you all before. That's the thing right here. That's this, this, this mouth, this, this tongue, this, this, this tongue, uh, not always expressing certain things um, and being able to say it differently. So I'm working, working on that. So, you know, when my flesh rises up, sometimes my flesh says, no, just go ahead and say it. No, just you be honest. But being honest don't mean that you always got to say something. Sometimes you got to step back and let Holy Spirit um, just kind of work on me. Let work on me, work on my spirit, work on what I'm thinking, work on how I'm going to say it so that I don't offend. So I'm working on that. I, I can't allow my flesh to say, you know, because some people say, well, I'm just straight up. I'm just honest. You know, I just say what I got to say, whether you like it or not. No, that's that's walking in the flesh. <laughs> that's walking in the flesh. That's walking in the flesh. So if you like me, you're working on this thing right here called your mouth. You're working on this thing right here, working on your tongue and being able, don't let the flesh, don't let the flesh, you know what they say, don't let your evil, don't let your good be evil spoken of. So work on it, work on it. Cause then you don't want to have to go back and apologize. And if you have to apologize, be a big girl, be a big boy and apologize. Right. Amen. Amen. We can, we can be truthful, but without tearing people down. You know, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. Because sometimes, you know, even the saints of God, oh, you know, I'm just being truthful. I'm just being honest. I'm just going to, I, you know, no, no, that's not how God, you know, Jesus did get angry sometimes, but he operated in love. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So what are the four things? What are the four things? What are the four things? The first thing is when we walk in the spirit, we have freedom from judgment. We have freedom from judgment when we walk in the spirit we are free from judgment from condemnation not just from um god but from people from from people do you know some people some of us got to get over people amen some of us have to get over people because people will put you let me tell you people will put you in a place where you'll never be able to feel like you're like you're um you know like you're worthy you're never going to be able to feel like you're worthy of of serving in god's uh kingdom that you're never going to be worthy of serving god's people don't allow people to put you in a place of judgment we we we've been declared right with god uh we've been declared jesus did it once he died on the cross he wiped our slate clean we are clean we are clean the second thing the second thing we are free we are free from defeat we are free from defeat. Um, that is in Romans 5, 7 and through 17. You got to read the whole chapter. We're free from defeat. And what do I mean by that? Sin and circumstances can no longer control our lives. It can no longer control our lives. When we walk in the spirit, we are free from being defeated. And sin, circumstances cannot control our lives anymore. Go ahead, just put say no more, no more, no more, no more. That's how you got to get mad. You got to get mad even at your flesh. Just like you get mad at the enemy, you got to get mad with your flesh and say no more, no more, no, no more, no more, no more. Am I going to walk in defeat? No more am I going to walk in condemnation. No, why? Because my slate has been wiped clean, glory to God. My slate has been wiped clean. 
third thing, the third thing, the third thing. I see you, Jazz. The third thing, freedom from discouragement. Freedom from discouragement. Have you ever just talked yourself into a place of discouragement? Have you ever thought about some of the things that you've done, some of the things that you've been to, been, been through, some of the things that you've experienced, and then the, the next thing you find yourself in a place of discouragement? So I just want you to know, even in our suffering, even in our circumstances, we have hope. We have hope. What does the Bible say in verse 18? It says, for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And then verse 28 says, and we know all things work together for good. Listen, when you find yourself in that place and you find yourself, you have already, you've discouraged yourself. Some of us don't even, even need people to discourage us. We can find ourselves, we can talk ourselves into a place of discouragement, but you got to give your flesh that word. And I know, I know, I know what it looks like, but all things work together for good. I know every door has been shut, but all things work together for good. I know they've been telling me no, but all things work together for good. I don't see how it's going to work out, but all things work together for the good. I know, listen, this is fact. Here's the fact, but all things work together for good. My faith is telling me all things work Work together for the good. I know, I know some of you are in a place where you don't even know how you're going to get out of it. You don't know why things are happening. You don't know what you did to cause these things. And maybe you didn't do a thing, but you got to tell yourself, but I know, I know, I know that all things work together for good. So therefore my walk is going to be right. I'm going to walk in the right places. I'm going to walk with the right people. I'm going to walk in the right areas because all things work together for the good to who those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose even in your free you're free from discouragement but you got to talk yourself out of that you got to talk yourself out of that place of discouragement you got to remind yourself what the word of God says you have to remind yourself of that and the fourth thing the fourth thing the fourth thing we are free from fear we are free from fear we are free from fear Fear. What does the word says in verse 31? It says in verse 31, it says, what shall we then say to these things? Ah, if God be for us, let's make it personal. If God be for me, <laughs> glory to God, who can be against me? If God be for me, if God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. None, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So I'm free from fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I can walk in a sound mind. I can walk in a sound mind. I don't have to walk in fear. Why? Because if God be for me, who can be against me? I don't have to walk. I don't have to walk in worry. I don't have to walk in doubt. I don't have to walk in discouragement. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Glory to God. How are you walking? How are you walking? How are you walking? How are you walking? How are, how are you walking? Look, I'm done. I'm done. How are you walking? You got to ask yourself that every single day. I, look, I'm just pointing my finger. Uh, let me just, I didn't mean to point my finger in the camera. How are you walking? How are you walking every single day? You got to ask yourself when the storms start to rise, you got to say, I don't walk in fear. I don't walk in discouragement. I don't walk in condemnation. I don't walk in defeat because if God be for me, who can be against me? I know that all things work together for the good. I understand that there's no weapon that's formed against me should ever is going to prosper. I know that I don't have to be weary in well-doing for in due season, I shall reap if I don't faint. I know that I, I can walk in the newness of God. I know that the Bible says that I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I understand that I can walk in that. I walk in the favor of God. I walk in God's favor. I walk. I'm, I'm covered by his blood. I'm covered. I've been renewed. I've been restored. I've been regained. I've been, I, 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 I don't have to walk in those things. I can walk. I can walk. I can walk. I can walk like I am a child of the most high God. How are you walking? How are you walking? How are you walking? How are you walking? Glory to God. There is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore 
no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who don't walk after the flesh, but they walk after the spirit. I'm done for tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this word on tonight. Thank you, Father, that we're free. The song says, I am free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is rested. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm free because I'm walking in the spirit. Glory to God. Listen, if you have prayer requests on tonight, go ahead and put that up. If you have a prayer request, you can put that in the chat on tonight. If you have a prayer request, you can put that in the in the chat for yourself, um, for someone else, for a family member, for a friend. We're praying. We're always, we're continuously praying. We were away. And sometimes it feels like, um, you know, we hear just the news about what's going on here in Philadelphia. But while we were away, even down south in Raleigh, North Carolina, in the southern states, their crime rate they're, they're experiencing the same types of things that we are experiencing here in this city um, about the gun violence and about the crime rates and things that are going on. So we got to keep this thing in prayer. This is why, this is why kingdom workers, this is why we have to be in a place where we can walk no longer in condemnation. We don't allow ourselves and we don't allow others to condemn us for who we were and what we used to be and maybe some things that we may have done even in our Christian walk. But we are kingdom workers. We are kingdom builders. God has called us and he's called us. He's not coming. It is our responsibility to get this word out, to get this word out, to let people know that Jesus loves them. That, um, to let them know that he loves them and that he died for them. It is our responsibility that we need to do this. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, we're praying for Brother Porter now in Jesus' name. Brother Porter. Okay, we are praying for Brother Porter. Amen. We're praying for Brother Porter. Glory. Oh, okay. I see that. I see that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we're praying. Any any other prayer requests? Put it in now before we go. Put it in now before we go. Um, we're praying. We're praying. That is um, Brother Porter is Minister Eric Freeman's father, and um, Minister Keith Freeman, his mother, I believe, if she may be in rehab now, and I'm not sure. And Minister Tamika um, Wolf, her husband Thomas Wolf, is now in um, rehab. So listen, the the enemy is attacking. This is why we got to be walk. This is why we walk in the spirit. This is why we walk in the spirit, because the Bible says when 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 um, when the enemy comes up like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it. Listen, we got to walk in the spirit because we understand that these are trying times. That these are trying times. And guess what the enemy will do? If he can't get to us, he's going to try to get to our loved ones. But because we got the power of life and death in our tongue. We can speak against those things even now. The enemy does not win. The Bible tells us that we are overcomers. We've already won. We've already won. And we can speak those things no matter what it looks like. We can speak life. We can speak health. We can speak restoration. And that's what we're speaking even now. For for uh, We're speaking for Brother Porter. Um, we're speaking for uh, ministers, um, we're speaking for Mother Freeman. We're speaking uh, for Brother Thomas Wolf. We're speaking for those. Um, we win. Yeah, Erica, we win. We win. We win. We win. God can do anything but fail. And so, Father, we ask that you go into that hospital now, even now. Touch the doctors. Touch the nurses. Uh, touch the uh, PT workers. Uh, trust, uh, touch the aids, Father, give whatever needs to be done. Send those that are saved, that know the word of God, that know the prayer of faith, that they will go into these rooms and that they will be with them. They will be with our loved ones in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now for healing and for the testimonies that will come forth, that God did it again. He did it once and he will do it again in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we love you on tonight. We know that your word will fall, has fallen on good ground. We will continue to walk in your spirit and not after the flesh. In Jesus' name. Well, listen, I'm so glad um, that you all joined us on tonight. Um, um, we understand that we are in a time at the Art Christian Center 
that we understand that the, the vision that God has given us, and he has also now given us the okay to buy a building. He has given us the okay to buy the building. And there are many of you who have already sown into our Burning Bush initiative, and we thank you for that. We thank you for your giving. You can cash app dollar sign art center. Uh, let me just tell you, to date, we have raised close to $14,000 in two months. We have raised close to $14,000 to go towards um, some of the monies that we've already saved up, our Burning Bush initiative. God is going to put us in a building with a parking lot. We are speaking those things into existence so that we can put programs in place and we can restart those programs for our youth, for our singles, for our couples, for um, our food program. So we can do all of those things. We are um, we are just expecting great and marvelous things. The Bible says without the vision, the people perish. And so the vision is in place and some of you have given. So you can give to um, the Ark Center. You can also um, text to give. You can also go to our website. It's scrolling across the screen. Thank you for being a part of this giving initiative. We want to move in a building sooner than later. Amen. Sooner than later. And we are believing God and we are standing on his word and we are trusting him. And we thank you. We love you. We um, thank you for trusting us. Not just Pastor Rich and I, but all of us, our leadership team, thank you for entrusting us with your monies. But most of all, thank you for spending every week with us and believing that the word that we speak comes from Holy Spirit and not from selves. And so we thank you on tonight. We love you on tonight. Thank you for giving. Go ahead and give through Cash App. Go ahead and give through Text to Give or go ahead and give through www.theartcenter.com slash donate. And we will make sure that we will continue to be good stewards over God's money in Jesus' name. Remember, Lord willing, oh, Sunday, sun, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday is communion. Sunday is communion. So for all of our ministers, our leadership team that are on here on tonight, you know that Sunday is communion. We need you in place. Um, come on to church. Um, take communion with us on this uh, coming Sunday. Um, and the Lord willing, don't forget tomorrow our youth Bible study. Lord willing, we will see you on Sunday. Remember, we love you. God loves you. And Jesus is Lord. How are you walking?